Hi, my name is John Durant. Welcome to Beer That Tastes Like Beer. I'm here with my friend Mark. Hi, Mark. How's it going? Good, good. How are you doing today? Excellent. Good. Well, uh, let's let's talk about beer. What What is it that makes you so fond of beer? Why is it that you're, you're in the beer world? What do you do? Uh, well, I enjoy making beer. I enjoy drinking beer, too. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a good yeah. pastime, good uh, social activity. Uh-huh. Uh, so, uh, Sylvia bought me a, a beer-making kit. Okay. It's about this big. Okay. Made one gallon of beer uh-huh. for a Christmas present, and... And that's how I got started. So I made three three of those batches over about a year. Mm-hmm. And now I've graduated to making six gallons, 14 gallons at a time. Ooh. And, uh, and yeah, I still enjoy it. So like 14 gallons, how many bottles is that? Well, it's about 10, um, 10 bottles per gallon. So 140. 140 bottles. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so... How long have you said this took a couple of years to progress to this point? Yeah, yeah, it's been about three years or so. So from something in a box to big, yeah, massive bigger. carboys. And well, and... yeah, they get bigger than what I have. Mine's oh. just a home brewer shop. Uh, so the breweries make thousands of gallons at a time. Even the small breweries make you know hundreds of gallons at a time. Oh, yeah. They have you know pots that are as big as your kitchen. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. so, but I don't actually bottle anymore, so I keg. Once you get to a certain point, bottling gets to be time consuming. So you just throw it in a keg. Well, what are the flavors that you try? What do you what what kind of beer do you like to make? What is what is what's a challenge versus what you like to make? Do you? Uh, actually, they're the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> I like the peanut butter porter. Uh-huh. So the little darker beers, chocolate, uh, vanilla flavors in there, and coffee. Um, but the, the one that is the hardest for me to make is the peanut butter porter because the peanut butter is hard to filter out. Mm-hmm. It's a very, it's a powdered peanut butter and they extract all the fluids, the oils and the water, um, and it, or you're left with a dehydrated peanut butter mm. and you throw that in, but it's a very fine powder. So it's hard to filter out. So you gotta get the mix right or is it just getting it Yeah, out? I think it's has something to do with, uh, cooling it quickly after you've, made the beer after you've made the the batch or uh-huh. you've boiled it and then that one trick that people use is um, sort of this industry standard is to cool it down very quickly and it causes any sediment that's in the beer to drop to the bottom uh, but I don't have the equipment to do that oh that's right because you were talking uh, there's like a a, um, it's a pump that's true there's pumps too the pump is more for recirculating the hot water Um, as you're uh, waiting for all the sugars to be extracted out of the grains into the liquid when you're making the beer. Um, So the pump will recirculate it over the grain over and over until it's flushed out all the sugars and all the flavoring out of the grains. But uh, this this, um, cooling thing is a little different. This is after you're done with all of that and um, people uh, put it into... um, Almost maybe their final, that's called a carboy, final container where it's going to sit for a couple of weeks and ferment. Mm-hmm. They'll cool that down yeah. quickly okay. and it'll drop everything to the bottom. But it, and it's what it looks like is a, um, it looks like an air conditioning coil that's co- got cool liquid flowing through it. People flow uh, just tap water or ice water through it and it'll cool down the beer. It doesn't actually touch the beer, it's going through the coil. Gotcha. We've had discussions before about hops because you grow hops. I've mm-hmm. seen these grow on your fence there. Yeah, now it's, it's, it's true. That's more for fun. I wanted to see if I could do it, but it actually worked out pretty well. You're, I live in North Carolina, which is not supposed to be hop country. Mm-hmm. I think they like dry, um, dry, good soils. Um, Northwest has some really big um, uh, hop production facilities, mm-hmm. farms. Um, but North Carolina is not supposed to be that great, but they grow great um, mm-hmm. in my garden. I know some other beer makers that um, grow it. As long as they're dry, they can get a mold on them that oh. will kill the crop uh, if you don't uh, yeah, keep them dry. But mine are in a very sunny spot. Mm-hmm. They like lots of sun, and they pretty much taken over that area of the garden. Where do the, so you said the Northwest is a good place for hops. Um, where else in the world do, uh, do hops come from? Where, where do people say, okay, we need to go here to get this certain, yeah. certain flavor? Um, so I, don't, I can't tell you a lot about where hops are grown, but I know that they are grown throughout the world. Germany has, we import 
hops from different countries to get a particular flavor of beer. Mm -hmm. So some countries have sort of a monopoly on a particular variety. There's hundreds of varieties. There's a good uh, maybe two dozen varieties that are common that people use, and they've been working on um, the properties of the, almost like uh, bioengineering the, the hops, but it really it's just crossbreeding until you get a hop that has the characteristics that you want, really bitter or very fruity flavor, you know, mm -hmm. different beers have different yeah. sort of hop type uh, characteristics, but some of that comes from the hops themselves. So you can get, pick one of the couple of dozen hops that are out there to get a particular hoppy flavor in your mm -hmm. beer. And then the other thing people do is at the end of your beer making process, you boil it for an hour. Yeah. So during that hour, you're watching the clock and every 10 minutes or 15 minutes, you're adding a certain number of hops. Mm -hmm. And the later in the boil, so say you have 10 minutes to go, you throw some hops in, uh, those flavorings, that the characteristics of the hops that, that go into the hops at the very end of the boil mm -hmm. will be all the fruity flavors. Uh, uh, so that we yeah. don't cook off the... Uh... So the bitter flavors don't come out of the hops until you boiled it for a while. So the yeah. hops that you added at the beginning of the boil will have the fruity flavors, but some of those boil away mm -hmm. and go out into the atmosphere, uh, but the, the bitterness will remain. So if you want a nice combination of bitter and fruity, you add it throughout the boil. stages. Yeah. yeah, interesting. Now, uh, well, obviously, well, not obviously, but as, as we've learned as we go through this process, barley, uh, um, hops are not a necessary component of beer, but they do help it. Like, if we're talking about, uh, like, uh, barley or your grains, mm -hmm. right, that's a necessary component of beer. Won't yeah. be beer without yeah. that. Won't yeah. be beer without yeast. Yeah, because it's no alcohol. Sure. Um, what about uh, what about grains? Tell me about grains a little bit. Well, we could run through the the beer making process um, from beginning to end really quickly. It can take a lot longer than the time we have. <laughs> we tried it once and it, it went long, so we're trying it a second time yeah. just to see if we can make it. Through. But um, Give me the it's, it's true. You start. That's really how you start picking your grains. Yeah. Uh, or your ingredients, actually, because grains are part of the ingredients. But you just gotta jump on online and uh, pick a recipe that I want to make a beer for. Mm -hmm. And I um, make all grain recipes. Some people use a uh, sort of like a, it's a, a boiled down, um, uh, condensed, um, like almost like condensed milk. Like you get, you know, milk is um, got a lot of water in it. Yeah. Well, condensed milk has no water, a lot of the milk yes. part of it and it won't sugar. Um, well, people buy that condensed stuff and they'll just make their beer from that. But well, that's sort of like cheating. cheating. Yeah. yeah, so I just I just do the all grain and that's the only thing. No, when you got that box, is that what so, came in it? Yep, it did, actually. See, which I bet Sylvia knew that I wanted to do all yeah. grain. So, so, um, so you go online, you pick your recipe, lots of sites out there that you can choose from. Then you collect your um, bulk grain, which would be a light grain, like a two-row. A lot of people use a two-row. That's just what it's called. It's just a light um, grain that's crushed, uh, and uh, and that'll be, uh, if you're making six gallons, maybe 14 pounds or so. So you got a decent amount of that beer and uh, grain, and then uh, you'll add a few uh, grains that bring other characteristics to the beer, like a darker um, beer will have uh, a, a very long roasted or high temperature roasted uh, grain, which will make it almost black or chocolate colored, and they'll even call it chocolate grain. Yeah. Uh, so you pick a few different grains, and um, then you add, and you also add to your list of ingredients um, is your hops, and maybe you'll have some vanilla beans, and even some coffee, and uh, a few other ingredients, depending on what kind of beer you make. So, um, so then all of that um, goes into your um, hot water. So you've got your hot water going heating up while you've got your grains collect, you're creating your list of ingredients. Um, so once your hot water's at the right temperature, you throw your grains in, um, that'll be your first uh, set of ingredients that go in. And, and then um, as you go, yeah, pretty much you just uh, work on that uh, for about 60 minutes to so keep that at right temperature for 60 minutes. The temperature increases as you go um, through that 60 minutes. Every okay. 20 minutes, the temperature goes up. But 
uh, just to keep the process short here, um, once, you're, once you've um, had that sitting there for about 60 minutes, you drain it, um, throw the grains away because they're spent, mm -hmm. um, all the sugars, hopefully you got all the sugars and all the flavors out of the grain into your liquid. So then you boil your liquid mm -hmm. for an hour, that hour that we were talking about, and then you start adding the hops in um, every 10 minutes or 15 minutes or however you, whatever the recipe says. Sometimes, sometimes you only add it towards the end if you just want all the fruit, fruity flavors. Yeah. Now, hops, I should mention, also <laughs> helps preserve the beer too. In uh, fact, that's yes. you know, why they were used in the first place. Uh, IPA, uh, Indian Pale Ale, mm -hmm. uh, allowed the British to get the beer from England to India without spoiling by adding hops. So that's uh, Indian Pale Ale. So, but people now like the flavor, so that's what they had for. In fact, it's in every beer I've made has had hops, even if it's just a little bit. So, what's next on your on your beer agenda? What's going to be the flavor you're going to be making next? What, when I come down to North Carolina and visit you, what are, what are we going to have on tap? Yeah, I know we need to get ready for that, don't we? <laughs> so, I'm thinking a a, a nice uh, variety, maybe a porter, um, and then maybe a lighter fruity beer, and then an IPA, something. Else. Fantastic. Yeah. I look forward to tasting it. Yeah, I have to, have. Have to come down. We'll bottle some, we'll keg some, we'll have a party. Excellent, excellent. Well, that's about all the time we have for today. Thank you for hanging out with us, Mark. This has been excellent. Yeah, thanks. And for I hope we're seeing you again soon. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> and we're out. Sweet. <laughs>